In 2006, the Israeli aerospace industry, also known as IAI, sought to create a defensive weapon that meets the needs of modern warfare. Israel wanted to protect itself from the constant threats of bombings and possible ballistic missile attacks. For this project, the Israelis collaborated with India, another country looking to protect itself. Israel has spent an enormous amount of time, money, and effort on military programs intended to operate as preemptive defensive measures. In recent years, India began to do the same as it modernized and started to assert itself on the world stage. Both Israel and India have experienced historically rocky relationships with their respective neighboring countries. Thus, Israel and India were a perfect match to develop a defensive countermeasure to inbound aerial threats, and the Barak 8 project was born. Three, two, one, this. Can the Barak 8 track and destroy incoming missiles on land and at sea? Can it take down the drones of modern warfare? Most importantly, can the Barak 8 surface-to-air missile defense system protect Israel and India as the two countries intended? Continue watching and let's find out. Now buckle up because radar has detected an incoming bogey. Enjoy this latest installment of Fierce, Fire and Fury. The Barak 8 is an anti-aircraft surface-to-air missile defense system jointly developed by Israel and India. The two countries designed Barak 8 to protect against enemy aircraft and ballistic projectiles, as well as modern gliders and drones. This missile is capable of intercepting and shooting down all types of aerial threats, including planes, helicopters, and unmanned attack aircraft. However, it specializes in seeking and destroying inbound ballistic missiles, as well as projectiles launched by ships. The Barak-8 can be deployed on mobile trucks designed to carry land-based launcher modules or on combat ships equipped with vertical launching systems. The Barak-8 is loosely based on the Barak-1, which was a short-range missile designed to be launched specifically from ships as a defense measure to inbound enemy aircraft, ships, and projectiles. The initial improvements upon the Barak-1 sought to create greater range, increased interception effectiveness, and improve upon the projectile's overall performance. Israel and India were attempting to create their own version of the American Sea Sparrow missile system used by the United States Navy as a counter to supersonic anti-ship rockets. Let's review the technical characteristics of the Barak-8 and find out if Israel and India achieve their goal. The missile is nearly 15 feet long and has a diameter of 8.5 inches around the body and roughly 21 inches around the initial stage booster. The Barak-8 weighs about 600 pounds and includes a 130-pound warhead. It's equipped with a proximity fuse, which means the warhead will detonate when the missile comes within a specified distance of its target, as opposed to detonating upon impact. This type of fuse is meant to counter the evasive maneuvers of aircraft and inflict damage even without the Barak-8 slamming into its target. It is powered by a two-stage rocket motor that burns a smokeless solid fuel, making the Barak-8 very difficult to track mid-flight. And it can reach a speed of Mach 2, which is more than 1,500 miles per hour. The rocket is also capable of thrust vectoring, which means it can modify the direction its thrusters point increasing the rocket's maneuverability and allowing the Barak-8 to radically change its trajectory. The medium-range Barak-8 can cover a distance of up to 44 miles, with a flight ceiling of 53,000 feet. The long-range version extends up to 100 miles and can reach an altitude of 98,000 feet. The Barak-8 guidance system integrates GPS technology, the commonly used S-band radio frequency, infrared systems, and the classic active transmission radar that was implemented more than 50 years ago. The system's radar provides an exceptionally accurate, high-resolution, real-time image and focuses on targets using information from its external sensors that transmit all data to remote operators, even in the most difficult environmental conditions. 
The Barak 8 can operate during the day and night in all weather conditions. It can confront simultaneous threats so effectively that, according to Israel and India, the projectile can pursue and intercept multiple targets in the same flight, destroy one target and, if it remains functional, change course and pursue another target. This is possible because Barak 8 was designed to have a high tolerance for analyzing data. The missile will continue to perform as required even if its computer is saturated with information. More recent upgrades to the Barak 8 include a drone protection system that blocks an enemy system's ability to communicate with its remote computer, rendering the inbound unmanned aircraft or projectile inoperable, all without compromising the communications of nearby civilians. Israel and India also plan to integrate an innovative drone dome, which is a radar and laser beam system that, reportedly, can detect and destroy drones by firing a high-powered laser at its target. Drone Dome is also expected to disrupt communications between the unmanned aircraft and its operators at a range of several miles. The Israeli Navy has begun arming its small warships, the SAR-5 Corvettes, with Barak-8 systems, while India has already deployed them on its Kolkata-class guided missile destroyers. The land-based version of the Barak-8 has been in place for many years in both Israel and India. A typical Barak-8 unit on land and at sea comes in a pod of eight canisters, capable of firing all eight missiles within 20 seconds. Israel and India allowed the Barak-8 to enter the international market in 2014, and it has attracted the attention of nations such as Germany, Poland, and even Colombia, where tensions with neighboring Venezuela have risen in recent years. After learning about the new and improved Barak-8 missile defense system, we want to know your opinion. Do you think Barak-8 will be able to protect India and Israel from inbound threats? Drop your perspectives in the comments section below. If you found this video as intriguing as we did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more thought-provoking content. Thank you very much for joining us for this video. See you next time on Fierce Fire and Fury.